Taxation on gold and silver. It sucks. Nobody wants it. And capital gains taxes can be something that really tricks up a lot of people. So how do you prepare for it? How do you perhaps mitigate the liability of those capital gains down the road? Capital gains exempt coins are a great thing, but there are some other rules that might make something like this gold bar or even this silver bar, which traditionally you might think are not exempt, could make them exempt. So that and much more will be discussed in today's Precious Metal Ramble. Hello everybody, Backyard Bullion here and a very warm welcome to you all joining me for another Precious Metal Ramble where we shoot the breeze about all things precious and shiny. Now today we're going to be talking about capital gains taxes. Taxation on our gold and silver sucks whether you're paying sales tax, VAT at the beginning of your investments or if the government's getting their grubby little fingers over the actual profits you make at the other end of the investment. It sucks. Now, there are some avenues by which you can reduce some of those liabilities. I will be sharing some of my interpretations of the rules as they relate to me in the United Kingdom. They may very well differ where you are, so it's worth having a look at what rules there are and what potential avenues you can find to reduce that liability legally. That's very important to say legally. Don't avoid this because it can trip a lot of people up and you can get into some serious trouble if you try and game the system and don't do it really on the legit side. So well worth taking a good look at and I want to remind you all that I'm not a financial advisor, I'm not a capital gains tax advisor, I'm not a taxation expert. I'm just talking about how I've interpreted things as they relate to me. Please go and speak to a qualified financial expert or an accountant that specializes in this stuff if you have concerns or if you want to get some clarification on things you might hear today. Now with all that said, let's get on and talk about taxation on our gold and silver. First of all, what is capital gains tax? So for those that don't know, perhaps you just are oblivious to the fact that unfortunately, if you're investing in things, then you have to pay taxes. As Benjamin Franklin once said, birth, death and taxes are the three things certain in life. And unfortunately, taxation is one of those things that is always going to happen. We might not like it, we might not agree with it, we might think it's basically theft, but unfortunately, it's part and parcel of our modern world and our life. So capital gains tax is a tax on profits that you make on items that you've had and you've invested in. So if you've bought something and then uh, simple maths, let's say you buy something for a thousand pounds and in 30 years time you sell it for 10,000 pounds, you've made a 9,000 pound profit and the government goes, well done you, but also we want some of that for our own coffers. Uh, whilst it sucks, that's part of life. You've also got to look on the bright side. You've made some money over that time period. So it does suck, but you kind of get where it's coming from. Now, in terms of the actual rates, there are different rates for different tax bands, wherever you're based. If you're in the, um, the, if you're in the UK, it can be a bit different. In Scotland, there are different rates and stuff, but generally speaking, it's tied to a various different tax band that you're in. So if you're a lower rate, you pay a certain amount. If you're a higher rate, you pay an even higher amount. It sucks, and that's the way it is. Now, the good news here is for the United Kingdom that there are exempt items from capital gains tax. Very interestingly, there are some things on this table that I would imagine a lot of people in the comment section would not guess are capital gains exempt under certain circumstances. Now, coins, I think it's fairly easy and obvious to say. If you've watched half of the videos on my channel, you'll know that there are some capital gains tax exempt coins like sovereigns and um, coins like this 10 ounce Queen's Beast here. Any coin from the Royal Mint is capital gains tax exempt. You can buy literally a million pounds worth of coins, sell them for two million pounds worth, and you can be tax free on the capital gains side. Now there are some other things to consider if you just do that over a very short period of time. HMRC, our tax man, might basically say you're a business, you're trading, and therefore you need to pay income tax on that rather than uh, capital gains taxes, which would be zero. But there are, we'll talk about that a little bit more at the back end of this video, but there are different ways that you can go about protecting yourself on that side of things. Oh, you just don't trade, just buy it, lock it in a safe and keep it for a rainy day. But there are some other things on this table which are capital gains tax exempt in a certain way. Now, it's going to be down to interpretation, but basically, if you have a personal possession, there is an allowance within the capital gains tax regulations that allows you to sell personal items and they are completely exempt. They don't even have to enter calculations as long as they are sold for less than £6,000. Now, 
you'd have to have a strong case to say that something is a personal possession and they define a personal possession as what's called a chattel. For something to be defined as a chattel, it needs to be tangible, real, and you can move it around. And that's what a silver bar is. So you can pick up, move around this personal item, this personal possession of yours, and you can sell it. And as long as you don't sell it for more than £6,000, it's exempt from the calculations. Not a lot of people actually realise this. And it, you have to, of course, before making any financial decisions, please go and read this and maybe get some clarification from, um, of course, a qualified expert. Not me, I'm just a guy on YouTube talking about shiny things. But you can also apply that same logic to something like this, which is a one ounce gold bar. So, of course, the sale price on this is going to be higher, but current spot price is £2,000. Maybe one day spot price will be £6,000. And then you'll be in maybe the murky territories of selling a personal chattel or personal possession that's worth more than £6,000. But traditionally, people will always say, but a, you know, a gold bar from the Royal Mint is not capital gains exempt. It is exempt if you can demonstrate that it is a personal possession and qualifies to be a chattel. So, worth having a look. Google it. The premise of chattels applies to coins as well. However, it only applies to coins that are currently not legal tender in any given country. So, for example, these two very, very gorgeous uh, Perth Mint Lunar coins, Dragon and Tiger, big two ounce gold coins, they have denominations of $200. So they are not chattels, they are chargeable assets. And that chargeable asset category is the one you need to be really careful of. That's where any gains that you make on these are chargeable and you have to factor them into your, your calculations and you have to report those profits. Now there are a whole bunch of other little rules and regulations about what are chargeable assets and various things that are exempt as well. Well worth a look, but as it applies to precious metals, realistically, you can get away legally by calling your chattels personal possessions. Now, the only exemption to that is around this idea of whether you're trading these or not. Now, trading basically, there's, there's these great things called the badges of trade on the HMRC's website. Basically, if you just Google badges of trade, you'll find them, very simple. If HMRC deem you to be a trader, then these items will no longer be personal possessions, they'll be essentially business assets that you're buying and selling. And in those 14 badges of trade, I think there are, you can look to see, and I have to have sort of a majority of them apply. If one or two of them apply, they don't, because one of them is, for example, you bought something with the sole purpose of making money on it, like an investment you would. Well, yes, you can say that you bought this gold solely to make a profit on it, but you can also quite easily argue that you bought gold just to preserve your wealth and just to have something physical, to have a personal possession, for example. If you buy a lot of things in a short space of time and then sell them in a short space of time, HMRC will probably say you're trading. You get the idea. If you are a genuine person who just likes a coin collection or a gold bar collection, you can claim those as personal chattels. And you can £6,000 per item and you can go ahead and do that. Now, as I said, really important to double check that with your own financial circumstances and the own items that you've got. It doesn't apply to coins that are not, sorry, it doesn't apply to coins that are currently legal tender. So for example, I have to actually go and research this. I haven't researched this right now, but I don't know whether or not this beautiful um, 100 soles gold coin from 1962 is still the legal currency of Peru. I will have to, in fact, shall we do a quick Google search whilst I'm on the video here? So, um, Peru currency. So, I mean, yes, they, they have the sol still. So uh, perhaps this would be classified as a legal tender coin with a denomination of, as you can see, 100 soles. Um, so I'd have to look whether or not they've actually just changed their currency and looked into that. But for example, if this was a legal tender coin right now, it is a chargeable asset. So if I sell it, let's see what we uh, bought it for. We bought it for 2,505 pounds right now. Uh, I don't know what the spot price on this coin would be right now. If I sold it, it's probably about that because it was a bit of a premium when I bought it. Um, but nevertheless, if I made a profit on it, I would have to pay the taxes on those gains. But if it was, for example, some of the old Swiss Miss coins, for example, the Helvetia coins, we had a few of those come in through the Buyers Club not that long ago. Those are francs. Those are defunct currencies. They are not legal tender anymore. When I bought them, they weren't legal tender. And when I sold them, they weren't legal tender. So the person who was selling them doesn't have to factor them into their calculations because they would be deemed as chattels, these magical personal allowance side of things. Now, the 
downside of the capital gains tax exemption status on these kind of coins is that you can't claim a loss on them, which sucks. So if, for example, you needed to sell something and this particular uh, bar here was put down as a loss, HMRC and could potentially argue it was a personal possession, therefore a chattel, therefore not allowable to do that. And if you've gone and made a bunch of losses on this and then you ignore on some others, you're going to be in a little bit of uh, sticky wicket water if you actually get in trouble from HMRC. So the real nuts and bolts of this is you need to do a lot more research. There are ways that you can go about reducing that liability. Unfortunately, in the United Kingdom, we have had a massive reduction in the tax-free allowance that you get every year. So I probably should have mentioned and led this with this at the beginning of the video. You get up to £3,000 profit for free each year. So you can sell a bunch of stuff. But unfortunately, on gold, you can see that being quite a problem. If gold really does go quite a lot, if this doubles in price, gold's price doubles from now, you know, I'm going to make £2,500 just on this particular coin alone. And that's a lot. That's your near annual allowance all in one go. So there is definitely an argument to be had for getting rid of some of the capital gains chargeable stuff you've got right now and putting it into assets which are going to be exempt like sovereigns or other Royal Mint coinage or even potentially with you know the research backing you up from behind so that you know that you're going to be in the rights, things that could be deemed as chattels. Now my concern about the chattels side of things going forwards is that Unfortunately, we're in, I don't, I don't like being a political channel, but we can't avoid the fact that with the new Labour government that we got in, there is going to be a big increase in various different taxations across the board. Capital gains tax is going to be on their radar, because unfortunately, capital gains tax is one of those things where it's a luxury. If you've got capital gains within there, it's a luxury and you're doing well. If you've had the money and wherewithal to buy things and then make a profit on them, you're going to be taxed on it. So I can see, for example, the Royal... Uh, sorry, not the Royal Mint, I was going to say the Royal Mint. Um, the government changing the rules on capital gains tax and maybe eliminating the chattel's allowance or maybe reducing that total. Because uh, £6,000 is quite a lot, really. Uh, you know, if, if per item as well. If you just want to not tax a normal person who's selling a bunch of their clothes or collectibles or books and things, you know, just ignore that. Um, but unfortunately, I can see that coming down and I can see the £3,000 probably coming down as well, maybe even lower, and the tax rates that we pay for capital gains tax going up. So there is definitely some concerning times ahead when it comes to capital gains taxes. And so one of the schools of thought, and I was talking about this with Atkinson's, who I managed to get a little coin flip out with a silver bar in it, I grant you. But um, so Atkinson's not sponsoring today's video, but incredible bullion dealer. I was speaking with them and they said the capital gains tax is going to be a huge thing to think about for any stacker out there. If you're sitting on a bunch of Krugerrands, Krugerrands are legal tender coins, so therefore they are not exempt from capital gains. They are chargeable assets. You're going to be getting taxed up the wazoo on those kind of things. If you're going to hold for another 20 years, you might want to think about selling them and swapping them. You know, I just did a big video last weekend talking about my swaps of Britannia's for sovereigns. Yes, those were all capital gains to begin with, but for me it was about getting smaller size coins for liquidity. But if I was sitting on a big bunch of Krugerrands or a big bunch of capital gains, you know, chargeable assets, I would be very, very cons much considering dropping them out right now, exchanging it, paying the tax that you have to do right now before the rates go up and before perhaps you are going to be... Um, I don't know, taxed up the wazoo from the government and then put it into something that's tax exempt. That way, in 20 years, when gold doubles from now, you're not going to be taxed even more on the gains that you've made because the gains you make from today onwards would be nil. But also the tax rates going up. It sucks. That's my point. So, yeah, a lot there. And I hope that's been of interest. As I said, I just want to remind you all that it's not tax advice. I'm just a guy who makes shiny, th well, makes shiny things, yes, but also talks about shiny things. If you're going to make financial decisions having watched this video, really, really, really go and speak to an accountant. Go and speak to a qualified financial advisor and expert who can advise you on what the right course of action is. The chattels exemption is definitely a thing and it definitely applies to personal possessions, but be really careful about what actually defines a personal possession for you? Can you demonstrate it? Can you defend yourself if ever you were audited by the tax man? That's the most important thing to do. And if you're in a position like me where you've got intermingling assets of business assets and non-business assets, you have to have a clear-cut separation of church and state. 
You know, one of the badges of trade out there is to say, for example, how long you've owned things. You've owned things for a long time, great. The other thing is whether you had pride of possession. And I can certainly say in preparation for any evidentiary hearings that might have to happen in the long distant future, if HMRC ever call me out on this coin, that I have massive pride of ownership of this. This is an investment product. It's not a business asset. It's not something I've bought to sell to make a profit on. This coin is sublime. It's my favorite coin in my entire collection. It's the largest gold coin that's handleable like this. These two ounces are bigger, but I love this. This is the thing that I love most, and that is pride of ownership. So yeah, there we go. Bit of a long old ramble today. And you know what? I'd love to know whether or not you're still watching. And one of the things that we've done to ask you whether you're still watching is see if you can quote the serial number of this bar down in the comment section. There's no prizes or anything other than a pat on the back from me and a, maybe an NFT cookie or something. There we go. Just quote P045404 in the comments if you're still watching to the back end of the video. And that would make you a backyard bully and rambler. So thank you very much for watching. And if you are in the Cool Kids Club members, you are super extra special cool, especially to anybody in the Cool Kids Club members who wants to go a step beyond and support our channel. We are releasing our 100 gram bars very soon. So stay tuned for those or get in touch if you'd like to find out more. Otherwise, that's it from me. We'll see you on the next video. As always, please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe for more.